Kobe and MJ are known not only for their incredible skills on the court, but also for their legendary mindset and work ethic. They both had an unrelenting desire to be the best and push themselves to their limits to achieve greatness. From a young age, both Kobe and MJ were obsessed with basketball. They both practiced countless hours honing their skills and improving their weaknesses. They were never satisfied with their performance and always strived to improve. And that's what made so many NBA fans amazed. When you talk about that killer instinct, MJ and Kobe are the first people that come to mind. So this video will look at the mindset and work ethic that propelled Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan to greatness. You will see insights from sports psychologists, coaches, players, and family members sharing stories about the passion and resilience that define these two legends. So enjoy the video, man. So at the age of 18, I knew that I was not going to be stopped. This was my life. We all can be masters at our craft, but you have to make sacrifices that come along with making that decision. I don't look at it as defeat. I look at it as just winning. You know what I mean? It's, it's of course at the end, you know, the end result is repeating, but man, it's a whole nother year. I'm not, you know, we did last year was great, but it's not that <laughs> difficult to me. Just forget about it, move on to the next season, and just win it again. Sellers has Jordan. Jordan with two seconds to go. Puts it up and scores at the buzzer. Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. With Kobe, he was so different to where it's, it was like, Phil, I want the assignment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Take Fisher off him, I want the assignment. Mm -hmm. I've never seen nobody as competitive like him, but Mike, that's it. Like when people talk about, you know, your favorite players and, and the, or the best players in the world, you know, I say Mike and I say Kobe. You know what I mean? And then everybody else. LeBron's after that for you? Um, definitely. Okay. Definitely after that. I always felt that Michael liked it best when it was the toughest odds against him. And while it's never really fun to be sick, it just added to the legend. And Jordan trying to slip it, and then took it back and hit. So Michael Jordan, despite visibly shaken by the flu symptoms, Isley starts his assault, gets it to Malone. Underhand layup, good. Shot clock at four. Morris. Yes. A fiery start for the Utah Jazz. The first quarter was probably just to get some of the flu out, but you know, as the game go along, and you're a great player such as Mike, you're gonna find a way to get it done. And that second quarter, he he caught fire. Yes. Time to massage that left ankle a little bit. Harrison Barnes picks up the foul. Warriors are out as hurting, but the Lakers down by two, and they want him and need him at the free throw line. Got it. Yeah, not backpedaling or whatever you have to do to get to the other end. If in fact he gets to the other end before a foul, maybe. made him. Lakers might foul. They might foul to get him out of the game. That's they have to. Yeah. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why. Seriously, what does failure mean? It's not, it doesn't, it, it doesn't exist. It's a figment of your imagination. Let's, let's use happy endings, right? And then we can relate this to failure, why it's not existing. Like, you know, everybody talks about, like, everybody wants a happy ending, right? Now let's go to the reality of it, right? Let's look at a fairy tale story. Let's look at Snow White. Mm -hmm. She gets a happy ending, she finds Prince, whatever she goes on, she lives happily ever after. Well, I call bullshit on that because Two months later, the fact is they had an argument and he's sleeping on the couch, <laughs> right? So the point is, the point is the story continues. The story continues. So if you fail on Monday, 
The only way it's a failure on Monday is if you decide to not progress from that, right? So that, so to me, that's why failure is not existent. Because, you know, if I fail today, I, okay, I'm going to learn something from that failure and I'm going to try again on Tuesday. And I fail and I'm going to try again on Wednesday. So, um, what I found is I found that he was extremely open um, to having a relationship, a mentor relationship, and giving me a great amount of advice and an, an amazing amount of detail, um, strategies, um, workout regimens, and things like that. So, um, and seriously, I mean, I don't think people really understand the amount of impact that he's had on me as a as a player and, uh, and as a leader. Parents out there, was there one point when you thought that Michael was going to be as great a player as he is? No, there was no way you could tell. You know, I always thought Michael would play baseball. Of course, he had that year that he, he grew so much, and it's just been a joy watching him develop into the player that the world can see today. All right, hopefully we can watch him all the way through the playoffs. I hope so. If he do, I'll be right there. I'll be his number one fan all the way through. All right, thanks, James. Yeah, my ba pleasure. Back to you, Mike. Playing and I don't score one point the entire summer. Really? Not one. How old were you? 11, 10, 11. And you're playing against other 10, 11 year olds? Uh -huh. or, and you didn't score once? Not one. Were you in the game? I was in the game. How'd you not score? Because I was terrible. Really? <laughs> yeah. That At happened. 10, 11 years old, you were that terrible. Awful. I mean, I, you know, and I had these big knee pads on because I was no. growing really fast. And I had socks all the way up here and I had like the high top skinny, fades, yeah. like skinny as hell. And I scored. Not a free throw, not a nothing, not a lucky shot, not a breakaway layup, zero points. And I remember crying about it and being upset about it. And my father just gave me a hug and said, listen, whether you score zero or score 60, I'm going to love you no matter what. Wow. Now, that is the most important thing that you can say to a child. Because from wow. there, I was like, okay, that gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. I have the security there. But to hell with that. I'm scoring 60. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> right, right. right. My competitive drive is, is far greater than anyone else that I've met. You know, I think that I thrive on that. I think that's my biggest motivation in life, you know, is to 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 compete, you know, find different competitions and certain things in life and, and, and try to overcome that, you know, be it positive or negative. But uh, I have yet to meet someone who is as competitive as me, you know, and I just feel that much confidence about players. my competitive. You know, I, I think that... Um, it was best told to me that, uh, you know, something that's an attribute that both of them have is that you could set the bar at seven and a half feet and tell them nobody's ever jumped that before and they say, I can do it. <laughs> and they'll go out and try it. Whether they can do it or not, they're still going to try and climb it. Just recently, Kobe says that, you know, he would play for the Dodgers, I think, left field, bat third. Uh, also, he could be a, a wide receiver in football. Do you think he could pull that off? Well, hitting that curveball up there in the majors is really a tough thing to do. Those guys, they don't throw many straight balls. As Michael Jordan found out. <laughs> As a wide receiver, yeah, Kobe's pretty good. He's got small hands, right. but he's got good hands. And that's the difference. I'm, when you asked me the difference between Michael and, and uh, Kobe, uh -huh. the mitts that Michael had, yes. those mitts were something incredible and, and really helped his game out. But uh, Kobe's a spectacular. The fear factor of, of MJ was so, so thick. Yeah, let's not get it wrong. He was an asshole. He was a jerk. He crossed the line numerous times. But as time goes on and you think back about what he was actually trying to accomplish, you're like, yeah, he was a hell of a teammate. You're playing with a guy that has the highest standards of any basketball player ever. You want to live up to that challenge. It's tough. Tough love. I mean, you gotta you gotta go out there and do your job. Put your dance down. Game time. That's nine. Bitch. Hey, Scott Moore, we might let Remember that because we was getting blew out in um in Portland. So everybody, um, Kobe's in the locker room just waiting for everybody to come in. And you know everybody down there got Kobe's on the team, so yeah. He come in, he said, Y'all playing like blah blah blah, soft and um, how y'all gonna wear these shoes and y'all soft ain't what we do here in LA. So I'm not thinking nothing of it. He tells everybody to take their shoes off, they Kobe off. I'm like, what? I'm like, what's wrong with you, man? I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> nah, take them off, take them off. And y'all did? And we took them off. Man. Man. <laughs> did y'all throw them in the middle of like the... Uh, in the middle of the pile, like he them all, he just started grabbing people's shoes and just throwing them, he threw them all in the trash. Oh, and wow. he's like, y'all don't deserve these. 
Yeah. This don't represent the, uh, you know, the Lakers and all that. I'm like, dog, until y'all get it right, y'all can't wear no Kobe's. <laughs> oh. I think the year was 97 or 98. It was one of the last championships that team won together. I do remember going back in the tunnel just barely. We wanted to see Scotty and Mike so bad. And I remember getting his autograph. I don't think I said a word, but just the fact that I was able to be there and meet the legend himself was so motivating for me. These times back in like the 90s or whatnot, it's responsible for a lot of us and why we're in the NBA now. I remember me and my brother at home, like my mom cooked dinner around the game. We didn't have YouTube, so me and my brother would have to go in the backyard. And Michael's mindset at, in the training was extremely unique. I mean, the most competitive individual I've ever met. Uh, never wanted to lose at anything. Uh, always felt like somebody else was going to outwork him, so he wanted to outwork them. Uh, knew what his weaknesses were, knew what his strengths were. Uh, he had a big thing where he used to say, hey, listen, I'm gonna turn my weaknesses into strengths, and he did. And what you notice is every year there was uh, evolution in his game. There was something that he added, whether it was a new shot, a new move. He was never satisfied, uh, no matter how many championships, how many titles, what people said, how many accolades he got. He always Same thing, he yeah. knows how to get to you in a way that affects you personally, even though if he's being a pain in the ass. <laughs> but it sh he always, you ever have a sense of love for him and the way that he can bring out the best in you. And he did that for me. You know, I have the greatest respect for Michael because he put his heart and soul on the court every night. You know, just watching him dribble up that court, looking you right in the eye and not knowing what he's gonna do is the scariest thing you ever wanna be involved in. He just made you wish that for one day that you could fly in the air. You wonder what it would be like. But man, I wanted to be like Mike. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I remember the first time I played against him. And um, I, w I walked out on the court and I, I looked at him and for the first time in my life, a human being didn't look real to me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if y'all watch the Chappelle show, but he, he talk about a certain incident where he seen somebody seeing Rick James. And like, I literally seen his aura. Like, like he, it looked like he was, it looked like he was glowing. Cole was, was my imagination. Growing up, when I start to understand and comprehend basketball, at a young age, it was from Cole. So whenever I watch him, I imitate whatever he did as a kid on right. an imaginary court, in a room, whatever. And it kind of just continued to translate as he grew and me seeing, you know, the stepping stones that he took playing basketball, I wanted to do the same thing. And it right. just carried over, right. you know? So um, just watching him and having an opportunity to watch him, even though we didn't have cable, that's who I, uh, I gravitated to early on. They've made a switch already, putting Kobe on Michael. <laughs> Well, uh, Bambi education, he's now in a postgraduate course. Watch Kobe Bryant guarding Michael Jordan for the first time. Yeah, and that's what you call when it was oops play. He, he, oops, he went the wrong way. <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And tell me, what is your favorite Kobe and an MJ story? So make sure you like, subscribe, and show those to the YG gang. And I'm out.